Well, all right, guys, I appreciate you joining me. Um, if you're new here, my name is Dave, and this is what I do for fun. I build motion racing simulators, or motion sims. This is a two degree of freedom that we've been working on. And this is the one I just raced. It's a three degree of freedom. And I just raced at the Surfspats Gentlemen's Racing League. So I had my VR set up. I had my butt kickers on for the first time in a, a little while. And we were at Daytona. It was it was epic. I had a good time. Um, so if you want to join us at some time, we usually race on Saturdays at about 1 o'clock central time that's noon eastern time in the usa so now i want to get some work done on this two degree of freedom seat mover so we have everything kind of set up um unfortunately you know i really don't want to use this i am um, i'm going to be sending this away to a friend so what i'm going to be doing is just rebuilding the whole circuit and i'm going to do that for a couple reasons basically i'd like to I wasn't real happy with the way that I explained it on um, a couple times that I did. Kind of rushed everything through. So this time I'm going to slow down just a little bit and we're going to we're going to build the whole circuit again. Um, and I'm just going to follow it step by step to help you out. Because there's no reason for me to be rushing through these things if, you know, you're trying to learn it. And I not that I left anything out last time, but you know, I could do better. So at the end of the last video, I told you we're in a real good place. We have the, the potentiometers mounted, the motors are mounted up, they're nice and sturdy. So the motor is going to be trying to move all the time to respond to the game, the inputs, your, your gas pedal. It's going to try to go backwards. The Arduino is going to send a signal based on the position of the motor to, deter to determine if the motor has reached where it's supposed to be or if it needs to keep going. Like say you're right here, step on the gas, that motor is going to go until you let off the gas or reach full throttle. The, the potentiometer is just going to read the position of where that motor is and tell the Arduino whether it's, whether it's there or not. Now this is all done at computer speeds so it's not like you're going to be guessing or anything the computer does it so fast you don't even you you don't even notice so here we are back at my cluttered workshop everything in its place and everything has a place now everything is everywhere <laughs> that's that's just the way my brain is and and i don't know i just don't have time <sighs> i don't know it is what it is all right so I actually did go ahead and get another one of these power supplies if we need it. Um, well, we probably will. Some of the basic things we're going to be using. I've got an enclosure. This is just an electrical box, which uh, you know you can get it at the at the home improvement stores. And basically, you you know hook something up here like a junction for wiring. You look in the electrical section. It just comes with a cover. We're gonna have to mount this fan on here, so we're gonna cut out um, the place for the, the fan to, to blow air down on the components. Uh, it comes with a couple other things. And all our components are gonna mount right inside here. We're gonna need an Arduino R3. Now this is a clone, so we're gonna be using that. Clone is not very expensive. This is an original. I have it wired up for um, some kind of sound stuff that I was doing, but um, this would work just as, as good. I would just take these things out and um, I could use it for that. But since we're gonna be using new components, I don't want you to think that you can't get it. This is maybe 20 bucks. I can't remember for sure, but I'll have a link in the description. We're gonna use a little power um, connector we're going to be running, we're going to be wiring everything up to this and some of it to here. We have two of these IBT uh, controllers. All right, guys, so some of the basic stuff we're going to need. Since this is a 24 volt system, in the other video I showed you um, basically how to wire up this uh, 24 volt converter. 
and then we get the DC 24 volts right out of these or these two sections. So we're going to be we're going to have to wire up this 24 volt fan. And each of these motors are 24 volt motors. Now I do have these uh, Hall effect potentiometers here. You could also use these uh, 10K. These are wire wound, so they may, they may cause a little bit of an interference issue. I don't know yet, and I'm not going to use them on this particular one, but basically the same function. We mount it up, and as as the uh, motor turns, it's going to the potentiometer is going to send a signal back to the Arduino. The first thing you really want to do is go to xsimulator.net and print out this page. This page is going to show you where to wire up everything. So if I put these two things here, these are the potentiometers, they're going to show how to wire it up um, to the Arduino. The next thing we want to do is wire up the IBTs to the Arduino. Let's get the Arduino ready. All right, so the Arduino, this is the same one that I used on the, uh, the, the first time we did this. Basically, we're gonna be able to plug this cord in here. It's going to go right into the computer and I'll show you how to do that. But let's just set this, uh, oh, it goes this way. So we're gonna be using this, this drawing to attach these different components together. It's not gonna be too hard. I'm gonna be using a soldering iron to do that and some uh, 6040 uh, solder. So you can get this pretty much anywhere. This is, I mean, I bought a bunch of this stuff back in the day. So what are we gonna hook this stuff up with? Well, if you can somehow scrounge together some um, 26 gauge telephone cord or just order some, uh, or, or just order some 26, 28 gauge wire, you'll be fine. I got this, I've had it forever don't use a lot of it but on a project like this not a problem another couple things we're going to need some some wire now this is 16 gauge and we're going to be using this to hook between the power supply which is going to make 24 volts we're going to be running this wire between the power supply and these ibt's now i got two different colors not a big deal um, just help me keep track of them. So the IBTs have two different um, motor connections. There's two of them for motor, and it doesn't matter which way you hook them up. And then there's a plus and a minus, and th that is important to hook up correctly. So we want to hook up plus and minus to the power supply, and then the M wires are for the motor. All right, so the last thing... And this is just going to make it a little bit easier for me to use uh, wire up from the Arduino to um, power and ground. So basically the, the Arduino, if you look at it, it has, there's a couple places for power coming off of it and a couple places for ground. Now if we look on the schematic, there are a number of red wires. So those are going to be positive and they're all going to connect right here. And there's a number of black wires and this would be ground and it's just going to be easier for, unless I solder the ground to like three different four different places it's just going to be easier for me to, to to run the wires into this and solder them on this little board so guys it takes a little while to collect up this stuff if you're ordering it online I mean the stuff may take a week to get there but the most important thing you want to go to xsimulator.net, and I printed out this page. I've used the page. There's some writing on it and stuff because I've used it for three of these projects. It really details exactly how these things are supposed to be wired, and it'll help you out a great deal. It may seem a little bit daunting, but trust me, it's not that bad. Um, you're going to need a soldering iron to do this the way that I would do, suggest doing it. If you solder your connections, you're gonna have a lot less issues. If you do use things like these, these little wires with uh, a little thing on the end, 
and they shove into the Arduino. It's going to be okay for testing, but it is a mechanical connection and it's going to wiggle a little bit and you may have some weirdness going on. So I would suggest let's just solder them right to the bottom and we'll be fine. We'll eliminate that confusion. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. We know that we're going to have to drill out or we're going to have to cut out this and mount the fan underneath. So let's do, we'll do that in a minute, but uh, let's lay out our components a little bit inside here. So we're going to have Arduino and we're going to have two of these IBT2s and we want the, the fins to be facing upwards so that the fan when it's mounted in here, it's gonna be blowing down. So we would just kind of rough place them in here where we kind of want them. And we're also gonna be able to, we're gonna need this um, on one of the sides so that maybe we have better access to the components. Maybe place it right here. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I've got the two IBTs right here. I'm gonna do the Arduino here. I can drill a couple holes right here so I can plug it in. So I can plug in the USB pretty easily. The last thing is possibly to mount this little, this little connector board. The IBT wires are just gonna run over to here. And I think this is a good situation. Um, I mean, there could be better, but this is going to clear clear it very well. It's going to blow the air straight down on all the components. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of this done. What I'm going to do first is, is using the wiring diagram, I'm going to wire up uh, one of the IBTs and one of the Hall Effect potentiometers to the Arduino. I'm also going to be using this and this to connect up the high, the big power stuff. I kind of drew out so I remember kind of where to put these things. Now the first thing I'm going to do is start working on the black and red wires. Those are going to be positive 5 volts and ground. And I'm going to be using this to uh, kind of connect as a junction to connect all of these things together. What you want to do, I'm going to be using a black and a red for these. And you want to use some kind of decent wire stripper. Now these are probably not all that good. I know I have some better ones around. Well, let's just take a look at what they do. Now if, you, if, if somehow you strip it down and you end up nicking the wire here, if, if you bend it a couple times, it, it may just end up snapping off like that. And that's going to cause you problems down the road. So you you want to get the right type of stripper that's not going to nick the wire so you don't have any problems later. Now you probably have done some soldering before, but if you haven't, you want to get your soldering iron up to temperature so that it melts the solder right away. You make sure your connections are clean. And then you just need a little bit of solder to flow. Right off the bat, this is going to be, the red wire is going to be uh, everything that hooks to the Arduino that is going to be positive voltage and everything that hooks to this is going to be negative or ground. All right, so what I'm concentrating on right now are the red wires, and I'm going to run them either from the, uh, the, the uh, potentiometers to this red wire here, or I'm gonna be running them from each of the IBT connections. It would be pin seven on the IBT. You can see it on the diagram, but if you look real close, there's a seven and an eight, and we want to solder from pin seven here to positive. And I'm just gonna run another wire. And 
and then on the other side, I'll just bend it over and solder it. I'll just move the wire over and solder it. Now you can do these one at a time, or you can do multiples. But if you haven't done it before, just take your time and do one wire at a time. Get it hot, put it on there. And there you go. And now we have two wires hooked to it. We've got one that's gonna run back to the Arduino, that's this, and then we got this one that's gonna to hook to the IBT. All right, up to this point, I've got three connections. Okay, I've got the two that are going to the Arduino, and I have one that is going to each IBT. So I need one more set of uh, positive and negative voltage, and so I, I made a lot longer cable here, a lot longer wire, and these are going to go out to the, the potentiometers, and we'll split it out um, the, the positive and negative when we get to the potentiometer. Okay, so by building this little junction here, it's going to really simplify things for us. We're basically going to have two wires going to the Arduino. The other two sets of wires are going uh, to the potentiometers. That's this coil here. And the other ones are going to the IBTs. Okay, I have both of the uh, power connections on 7 and 8 of each of the IBTs. They are going to pl plus and minus on this little circuit board. This is going to go to the potentiometers. And these two are going to the Arduino. Now just to, to make it a little bit easier for me, since I'm going to be connecting on the bottom side of the Arduino, I'm going to pre-tin these wires. So by, by that, I mean, I'm just going to take the soldering iron and I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to the end. That way they flow better and they make the connection a lot quicker. So real quick, I'm going to take some acetone on a rag and I'm going to clean off the bottom of the Arduino. So I don't know what kind of um, chemicals they might have on here, but it's easier to make a connection if there's not a bunch of, you know, extra crap on these. And this, this, this is just an easier way for me to do it. Just kind of clean it off. And now it should, should solder real quickly. And even here, they have power. Uh, you've got ground in 5 volts, and we're going to be hooking it right to that. The analog in, A0, A1, we're going to be using that. And we're going to be using some of these uh, digital switches, or digital 1 and 2, and then pulse width modulation, the, the PWM stuff. I have power and ground coming off the bottom of the Arduino. The wires are going to be hidden underneath it. And there's plenty of space in here so that um, you know we can just shove the wires in, coil them around. So let's take a look at what we need to do next. Let's look at one of the IBTs. Three and four are connected together. They're connected together right here, and they go to pulse width number five on the Arduino. So let's take care of that and go over these things one wire at a time and double check your work. Oh, also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this, this our, uh, IBT, we're just going to call this number one. We'll call the other one number two. I'm going to light right on here number one, and I'm going to write on here number two. That'll just help me orient uh, the different things. So once again, pin one and two, those are going somewhere. Three and four, we're going to connect them together with this green wire. We're going to run the green wire over to the Arduino pulse width uh, pin 5. And that's going to be enable motor 5 on here. So I've got 3 and 4 on this IBT connected together and running over to uh, pulse width number five, pin 5 on the Arduino, just like here. 
So on the schematic or the wiring diagram, uh, one and two, they're going somewhere we haven't done yet. Three and four are tied together right here and they're going down to five on the Arduino. So when you're doing this, just, you know, just take your time. There's no rush. Maybe put some music on, something like that. Like I was showing you before, I mean, I've got all sorts of different colors of wire to use. So I'm just gonna, since this is going to be blue and uh, like a brown, I'm not gonna go that far to, to match them up. I'm just gonna do a blue on this side and, um, I'll do a yellow. It doesn't really matter um, what what you use as long as you understand it. So I'm just going to tin the ends here. Make my connection just a little bit easier. Pin one is going to be the blue one. And pin two is going to be the yellow and blue. All right, everything looks good. So the other side of this, the blue one goes to pin four on the Arduino and the yellow and blue one goes to pin 10. So this would be nice and neat. Just take your time. You're gonna need a multimeter or at least something to check continuity. I would definitely recommend it. As I go through this little wiring, I'm going to check for continuity to make sure the wires are actually on the right pins and that I don't have any shorts. So the first time you do this, your soldering is probably not going to be real good. Um, and the older you get, like me, the worse I can see. So I got to make sure I put them on the right pins. Sometimes I don't see it quite right. But uh, so I just use this to double check yourself to make sure that that it's that's following the schematic. Even though you try real hard, you still can mess it up. Not a big deal because you're not under any pressure to do it. And trust me, the stuff works. You've seen it on every one of my videos. They're all wired the same way and everything does work. They just got to be hooked to the right wires and by soldering them. That's going to make sure the connection is good. It's not going to wiggle. It's not going to come loose. And you're going to be, you're going to eliminate a lot of little problems um, that a loose wire could have. Let me tell you a little story about my traction loss. So I had the traction loss put on and I just had, I just had one of these little wires that slide down into the Arduino hooked on there. I was pretty excited to get this thing rolling, but every now and again, it would come a little bit loose. Traction loss would just stop working. After about two months of being frustrated, because every now and again, it wouldn't work, and most of the time it did, every now and again, I just said, I'm just gonna rebuild the whole thing. I soldered everything together, and I haven't had a problem in two years. No problems whatsoever. So soldering it is the way to go. All right, let's keep going. And soldering doesn't take all that long. So I'm just going to double check here. Make sure that we don't have any shorts. I'm going to go to the blue wire. Yep, that's fine. The yellow wire, yellow and blue. Yep, that's fine. Um, and the green. All right, so, and we could do between red and black. I don't have any short there. I got red. Good. And and this is just to help if there's a if there's a, a troubleshooting that you need to do, but everything looks okay. So that's one of the IBTs. I'm just going to wire up the next one. That way we can tuck all this stuff inside, you know, inside the box. All right, guys. Everything's wired up on the bottom of the Arduino and on the IBTs except for the yellow from potentiometer number one, or I'm sorry, the yellow from potentiometer number two, and the orange from potentiometer number one. So we're gonna, I'm gonna grab a length of orange wire and a length of yellow, and I'll make it 
pretty long because it has to reach all the way to the potentiometers. Just like the power does. Alright, so the initial wiring is done. Now let's uh, turn our attention to this. Since I don't have a pen that will fit down in these slots very easily, I'm just going to line it up and do some punches. And I should, yeah, I can get the, uh, the hole right there. What I'm going to do is kind of just trace around the inside with a scribe. And yeah, I can see the line that I need to cut. If you hear any noise in the background, it's just the heater. It's just It was just too freaking cold in here. I'm just making a hole so I can fit a jigsaw in there. All right, so the fan is gonna fit right here. Drill out the holes to mount the fan. And we don't know which way this is blowing. I would, so, okay, so it, it has a little thing here that says blows this way and spins that way. So we want it to be blowing down. So we'll mount it just like this. But I may want to clean these edges up just a little bit. That kind of looks crappy. All right, guys, so we have all the, everything's ready to go. And I did mock it up with a little bit of non-conductive material, i.e. wood. You can do whatever you want, plastic, something like that. These are just to get uh, the components off. And I can run the wires underneath, have the fan, ha have the fan blowing straight down. So we take a look. The uh, Arduino should fit right in here. Um, the power wires, <clears throat> take another look. The power wires are going to be nice and high so that, and we're going we're to drill a, a hole uh, right in this area. Right around here. So we'll drill all this out cut it out with a jigsaw or something like that so that we have plenty of uh, ability to, to run the wires in and out. Arduino should be just fine. We may have to do a little bit of recess because we do have these uh, wires coming off the bottom. So we're just gonna have to kind of just clean this area out just a little bit right in here. Not a problem. Um, And all I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue this wood in. Um, so I should be able to use screws and everything just to secure the Arduino and the IBTs down as, as well as these things. But um, all we need to do is just, I don't know, get to work, get this done, and uh, then we'll be able to hook it up. I cut all the different holes. Everything fits in here. Uh... It's glued in, so it should be pretty strong. Um, what I'm gonna do is just clean this up and hit it with a little bit of paint. So we'll paint both uh, this thing and the fan. All right, oh, cutting the video short right now. Getting tired, getting old. Um, but that'll leave me more strength for tomorrow so that we can get this thing actually wired up. This is just stuff, you know, the, the soldering and stuff. It just takes you a little while to do. I mean, you got to do it just a little bit at a time. And, uh, you know, don't stress out. Use the tools available to you. Like this to check your work. Look at the schematic or the wiring diagram. Look at that. And just take your time. Get it right. And it'll work. If you get one wire off, 
something probably going to work, but then some part of it isn't going to work. Double check for shorts. So you want to check from positive to negative with uh, the continuity tester. If you go from like plus five volts to ground and you get something like that, something ain't hooked up right. So you don't want to put a power to it yet. All right, so we'll go. This is not that much stuff, really, to control all that stuff. This is not that much uh, equipment. And it's just going to fit in this little box. Fan's going to blow on it. Now, this 24-volt fan right here, this thing is not going to be as loud as that 3,000 RPM fan. I actually bought the 3,000 RPM for this, uh, for the wind sim. So it's not going to be as loud at all. And these little, these little 24 volt, um, 25 amp power supplies, they don't make noise at all. I mean, you've seen that on the other videos. All right, well, I'm going to get this posted and um, on to the next thing tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll be able to work on it tomorrow. Feeling pretty good, but man, it, is, it was cold out here today. And yeah, need to take a little bit of a break. So, hey, I'll see you guys next time. Later.